Yeah, likable science. We really do likable science. I do <laughs> like science with Ethan Allen. This is a special show with Ethan Allen about likable science, and uh, uh, I'm the guest host. I'm Jay Fidel, and he's the host guest. Did I get that right? You did. Exactly. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about AIDS. You know, it's a really interesting topic, and let me, let me give you my own thoughts. You know, back, back in the day, I guess it was in the 80s, we saw an outbreak of herpes, which scared everybody about, about uh, free sex. Um, and then, not too long after, I guess it was within 10 or 15 years after, herpes broke out, the dreaded AIDS came out, and it was affecting a lot of people, and it was, it was, it was a terrible, horrible disease. Mm -hmm. So many new and, and painful and, mm, I want to say, really terrible things that happened in right. AIDS. And, uh, and, and, there were, and there was a lot of social you know, reaction to it. Um, and there was a lot of medical research about, by right. smart guys uh, and girls who ultimately came up with a bunch of ameliorative, ameliorative type drugs, mm -hmm. cocktails, I recall, um, that could actually slow the AIDS virus down mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately give you a life. Right. Um, it, but it couldn't cure the AIDS virus. Right. It can only slow it down and, and give you a life. Um, but you were always, you know, headed over, over your head as a shadow. All right. Now, recently, a few days ago in the New York Times, there is reported um, the story of the Berlin patient who was miraculously cured, and also the London patient who was likewise, uh, I think, right. miraculously it's, it's cured. First um, and second patients actually cured of the disease. So. Yes. And, and now what is uh, remarkable on a local level is that two years ago, um, the University of Hawaii uh, Medical School and John A. Burns School of Medicine, in connection with the uh, Cancer Research Center, which is on its grounds there in Kaka'ako, had a program um, about AIDS, about AIDS research. And they had uh, Virginia Presla, who was then, I think what then was the um, Director of Health, right. or had just been the Director of Health, and uh, Cecilia Shakuma, who ran the AIDS research program. And a, a number of the researchers in the program, and remarkably, the Berlin patient, oh. Timothy Brown, he was there. And we, we made a, an OC16 movie of this, and we'll play part of it for you later. So let's catch up on AIDS, you know, because we haven't, we meaning the community, we really haven't talked about AIDS so much. It was never the kind of thing you shouted from the hilltops. <laughs> People didn't really want to tell you their no. AIDS status. It was all secret as it should right. be. Um, but, but now there's been news. So, Ethan, what is the news? Well, so fundamentally, the news is that at least two patients now, and likely a few more in the pipeline, have, may have, well, may have actually been fully cured of the disease. It was not a simple process uh, to do it, and it was uh, fraught with its own complication. But and we can go into the, the mechanisms here in a bit if you want. But that's, these patients now do not have to take their antiretroviral drugs. Uh, they do not have any discernible HIV in their blood or uh, any tissues. Cured. Uh, they are basically cured as far as anyone knows, yes. And there was first the Berlin patient who was cured about two years ago. Now the London patient has just finished up a year off of drugs with no sign of any sort of recurrence. As I say, they're, they're following a set of people who've had similar procedures now, which we'll go into, uh, and some more of them are you know, some months into this, and apparently they're still doing fine. So. That's really, it's, 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 it's marvelous. It's a huge right. breakthrough against a really deadly and unpleasant right. disease. Right. You know, footnote, I, once upon a time I had a client uh, who somehow um, contracted AIDS, and um, it was before the retrovirus drugs were available, and it was the end of his life. Oh. He, he dropped out of what he was doing. His wife dropped him. Uh, his family dropped him. He was, he was out and gone. It was the end of his life, um, and we don't have that anymore. Yeah, the, the disease came with an awful social stigma. Uh, truly, it was badly, it was poorly understood and greatly feared that it could be spread 
other ways, in, in casual ways, casual contact would spread it. And that's, of course, not true. Yeah. But there was the fear that it would, and thus people who had it were just shunned. Yeah. And you right. say that the families would abandon them, the friends would abandon them, making horrible death that much worse. Yeah, you know? so social deaths is what you've right. got, family death. Right. Anyway, so this is really good news, but it's not generally available yet, right? Right. It, and it's a process that you, you can't undertake lately. Um, so, as, as you probably know, so the reason AIDS is sort of so tricky is that it attacks our immune system cells, or cells circulating in our blood, white blood cells that actually are responsible for finding foreign invaders in our bodies and, and killing them. And by disabling our immune system cells, we, our systems become open to all kinds of other infections. So it's not typically the HIV per se that kills you. It's pneumonia, Kaposi sarcoma, chlamydia infections, things that often should be much less, they should be sort of, I won't say benign, but they shouldn't be lethal. But you have no immune system and these infections then sweep through your body, ravage your tissues and kill you. Uh, and these other conditions are, in many ways, they're specific to an AIDS patient. Well, no, not, not necessarily. I mean, anyone can get pneumonia, anyone can get the chlamydia infection. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Once your immune system is shot, you're sort of this target for almost anything. Uh. Uh, and plus, without an immune system to fight it, these seemingly minor infections can become just nasty and lethal to you. Yeah, um, awful, and, and they present badly on you. Yeah, that's yeah, typically right. It's, they sort of they, they support the notion that you've got some really pernicious thing going on. You cannot appear in public. You cannot talk to your friends. Yeah, yeah. This is it ha this was in the early years of the epidemic. One of the worst parts of it was you had to sort of had to hide it. Fortunately, as as has become more realized, that basically it spread through unprotected sex, through sharing needles, and mothers passing it to their children in their womb. And those are the, basically the only three ways to get spread. Can you talk, <clears throat> you, you alluded to the biochemistry, the, I guess the molecular biochemistry, right. which is what they talked about at this conference a right. couple of years ago at the medical school. And wow, it was complicated. Oh, yeah. Charts and graphs. And, and I believe, by the way, that some of the researchers at the medical school, the Cancer Research Center, um, working on AIDS, participated in, in the treatment of the Berlin mm -hmm. patient, which mm -hmm. is, we'll show some footage of him later. Um, but can you talk about the molecular biology involved? Sure. So the treatment actually is a, is a rather radical treatment. You have to remember your blood cells are being replaced continually from your bone marrow, basically. And then once they're uh, born, they have a fairly limited lifespan, and then they die. But you are producing literally millions of blood cells every second out of your bone marrow. Now, second sort of fact, certain cells have, our, all of our cells have a lot of different kinds of receptors on them, multiple kinds of receptors. We're only just beginning to get a sense of some of those receptors. But it turns out that- It's like a sensor. Yes, uh, and, and it allows other things to bind onto the cell. Okay. And it turns out that virtually all forms of AIDS, and there are several strains of AIDS running around, virtually all of them need one particular kind of receptor to bind onto. And it turns out there are, uh, a certain number of people in the world who have defective receptors of that particular brand, kind of receptor. So what they do with patients who want to get this treatment, they essentially kill all of your blood marrow, all of your bone marrow. They, they either irradiate it or hit it with toxic chemicals, literally leaving you with no bone marrow left. And then they give you a bone marrow transplant, ideally from a patient who has this particular defective kind of receptor. Uh -huh. Because then you start producing new blood cells. All your cells have this defective receptor. AIDS virus can't latch on to it. And basically, you are, you are then, in, in theory, cured. That's pretty sophisticated. But yeah, it's, it, you can see it's not a simple thing. Getting oh, rid of all your bone marrow is... Yeah, killing is, all your bone marrow, right. that's a project and it, probably very unpleasant. Right, and has, um, yes, bad side effects. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and that, that could hurt you in other ways, I'm sure. <laughs> This is if not you, without bad side If you can't get it replaced, you're, you, you, are, you are gone or quickly. You're gone, yeah. <laughs> and you need your bone marrow to create the red cells to right. keep you alive. Right, absolutely. So, okay, and then so once you kill all the, the marrow, how do you replace the marrow? Well, that is, everyone has bone marrow, and so they, they essentially draw some out of large bones in, in these healthy donors. Ideal is to say these healthy donors who happen to carry this genetic mutation for a defective receptor, and then they basically inject that bone marrow into your bones, 
And so that stuff just starts producing and doing what bone marrow does, basically, and cranking out new blood cells for you. But now there are blood cells that are like that donor's blood cells. That is, they are, they are missing this key receptor. They have a defective kind of receptor. And the AIDS virus can't latch onto it. It can't detect new cells. It can't kill off your immune system. Your immune system rebounds. You become healthy again. A transfusion wouldn't be sufficient. No, this has you, to be... Because the bone marrow is where the problem starts, and you have to get good bone marrow to, right. to be, be cured. Right. Yeah. So there are actually now something like three dozen patients who have undergone this process. Um, Berlin patient was one of the very first people to do it. Some of these, they have managed to use donors who have these defective receptors. Others, they've just... Because those people are not terribly common, they've just used other people's... Uh, bone marrow, and, and these people may get reinfected, not clear yet. Um, but, but they're able to tell when you have uh, the flawed receptor, they, they and then you become a potential donor. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure, that, but it doesn't sound like there's that many people who qualify for No, that. there's uh, apparently a cluster somewhere in northern Europe of people where, it, where it's a little more common. I suspect there are groups right now working desperately to locate those people, identify them, cultivate them, Get them into regular donor programs where they can where they can do a world of good to patients. You know, I would I would say that uh, medical science uh, researchers in this area must be looking for a way to uh, do this without the, the need for finding a donor. Um, you know, and, and sort of make make a change uh, genetically, stem cells, what have you, and introduce those into your existing marrow without having to flush your marrow now. I, I'm, I'm guessing you're quite right. I'm guessing there are people working on, and you and I have talked about CRISPR before, this yeah, technology. Right. We learned a lot on this show, I, I, Ethan. I, I, <laughs> I suspect there are people working on how, how you can use CRISPR to get in there and start yeah, uh, altering your bone marrow cells to generate effective receptors of this particular receptor so that uh, your blood cells then come out resistant to the AIDS virus. Well, considering how complicated um, you know, AIDS is, and the way it affects your, your, your cells, your body, your, you know, immune system and all that, and, and the way the immune system, you know, permits these, um, these um, really awful uh, diseases to take place in your, sub-diseases, you know, associated mm -hmm. diseases take place in your body. Um, this actually sounds pretty elegant. Uh, and it, it's sort of brilliantly simple in its own way, isn't it? Oh, it is. It, it, in its own, yes. And as you say, in its own way, I mean, you, you're, you go right to the root of the, the problem, you, you rip out the bone marrow, you replace it with good bone marrow, and you're done. I mean, yeah. it sounds simple, <laughs> but <laughs> the techniques are a little more than that. trickier, yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, it's, it's, we live in an amazing era that, that, that we have medical science that can actually do this uh, and can do it reliably, rep repeatedly, you know, and, and make, make the whole thing work. Yeah. But yes, people are looking, uh, you know, there's lots of other ways that, that people are looking to cure AIDS or to stop the virus because, yeah, you don't really want to go having to knock out all of your bone marrow to cure a disease. Taking that's, other that's, risks. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's these, And these guys go through hell oh, yeah. in the process. Yeah. Uh, let's take um, a minute. Uh, well, let's take a minute off first. Okay, and we'll have a break. When we come back, I want to start playing the footage we took of Timothy Brown, who is the Berlin patient, yeah. who was the patient who was cured, mm -hmm. and when he was here a couple of years ago, he described his own medical and life experience. It was very interesting. Only a couple of minutes yeah. worth of video, but it was uh, profoundly interesting when he was here. Excellent. And the room was filled with people, researchers and doctors and what have you, um, uh, hearing him out. So when we come back, we'll listen to him, and we'll hear what he had to say, and then we can comment on that. Okay. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Lauren Pear, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, 
and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back. Ethan Allen and me <clears throat> talking about likable science and, and, and a cure reported in the New York Times about AIDS. And we want to play for you the footage we took of Timothy Brown, the Berlin, Berlin man who was uh, included in that article in, in the Times. And then we can evaluate uh, and comment on what he is saying about his life experience and his medical experience uh, in terms of the process and the cure. Take a look at this. I was attending school in Berlin in 1985 when I tested positive for HIV. I was terrified and thought for sure I was going to die. Some of my friends had already died of AIDS from AIDS. The cure was never discussed back then. I was prescribed only AZT. Then the protease enriched drug cocktail was realized. The next 11 years were pretty uneventful. It wasn't until, 19, or until 2006, while living in Berlin, that I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. This was bad news. A young hematologist, Dr. Gary Hooter, started me on chem chemotherapy the very next day. I developed pneumonia early on. I had to stop my third round of chemo halfway through when I developed a sepsis infection. Tubes were placed into my heart. I should have died. I was, I was released from the hospital and, the, and my leukemia appeared to be in remission. Yeehaw! I took a vacation to Italy, doctor's orders. Unknown to me, Dr. Huter was realizing, or was reading about something called a, the, a rare CCR5 receptor gene mutation, Delta 32. In 2007, while I was on a trip to the US, I soon found out that the leukemia returned. Shit, not again. Initial attempts at a different chemotherapy were not successful. I was going to die. However, a stem cell transplant became a, a viable option. Then Eureka, Dr. Uter had a revolutionary stem cell treatment idea. Why not use a compatible donor who had the CCR5 mutation, someone who is naturally immune to HIV? Dr. Uter thought maybe it would not only cure my career, or cancer, cure, uh, but also my HIV. Wow, <clears throat> what a story. That's, that's a small part of the uh, conference that we uh, filmed. It's, um, it's uh, Think Tech on OC16, episode 257. It's available on our website, um, and it's available on our YouTube channel. You search for Zero AIDS, uh, you can find it, or, or, or episode 257. So, very interesting. This is the real McCoy. This guy mm -hmm. flew in from wherever he was uh, to talk at this conference, to talk about this cure. Um, and you could see he was nervous. He was not a, not a professional speaker or, or any of that. He was reading his notes. He was shaking while he was discussing it. But it was very, very interesting from a human uh, scale point of view. Uh, and from a medical point of view, everybody was fascinated to see him standing right there. Right the Berlin patient. Right. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing because he had been diagnosed with the disease, then began getting some, one of these serious uh, disease, myeloid leukemia, which can kill you very quickly and easily, and managed because of very fortuitous timing, apparently, uh, the research on this, this CCR5 receptor had just advanced that point where they realized this would be a good thing to stick in, uh, to, to pop into the bone marrow instead, once we get rid of the bone marrow, is to find somebody who has that, and they were apparently able to find somebody. Brilliant. He actually had, as I understand, get 
two or three years after his first transfusion, he got a se his second donation from the same from the same donor to sort of reinforce the the. Uh, Had to do it twice. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, but he has now been uh, several years living without taking the antiretroviral drugs. He has no no trace of the virus anywhere that anyone's been able to see. They've actually gone in and sort of take samples of tissue where the AIDS virus typically sort of hangs out and hides. Um, never shown up in his blood tests ever since. Yeah, so he, it appears that he is cured. It's, it's luck. He was happened to be well, in the right time, right place, right, the right doctor, the continuum, <laughs> right doctor, continuum of research, yeah. just at the right place. Right. And he was, and, I, and he found a doctor, or a doctor found him where right. they could they could make a historic discovery right. together. Right. Yeah. So that's Timothy Brown, and it's it's a real story about um, about medical research. Uh, it's a story about the John A. Burns School of Medicine, right. and the Cancer Research Center. Um, and it's a, a, a story um, now repeated in the New York Times two years later. What took them so long, actually? <laughs> well, I mean, now they've done apparently the same procedure about, on about three dozen patients. Most of these fairly recently have sort of started amping it up once they saw that mm -hmm. this really actually could work. Um, so recently it was announced that the second patient, the London patient as they refer to him, uh, has now been a full year off of antiretroviral drugs with no sign of the virus circulating at all. So that, that is, that's sort of what triggered this article. That, that is their, sort of their benchmark for a cure. Uh, most patients, if they go off the drugs, will start having the virus show back up in their blood uh, fairly rapidly within a matter of weeks or months, certainly. Uh, so if you can go a year without it, they, they sort of arbitrarily declared that as what they'll call a cure. You know? yeah. Uh, and they say in this block of 36 patients, there are other patients who are now entering six months without, without it showing up when they're off of uh, off the antiretroviral. So there's, it's likely to become a whole series of patients who are going to be cured. It's still a small number out of them, considering that whatever 36 million people have this disease and tens of thousands die of it. 36 every, million yeah, oh around the gosh. world. Yeah. Um, That's huge. Yeah. So, if you are, if you've had your marrow changed and you're still taking the antiretrovirus uh, uh, in order to be safe, and you and you stop taking it, mm -hmm. stop taking it, um, and the virus comes back, I guess you just go back on the antiretrovirus, and that and that will help you as it did before. I, I would think that would be how you would do it, right? Uh, I don't know the subtleties of the treatment regime. I'm sure there are the medical end. subtleties yeah. of getting off and getting on, right? Uh, I suspect they don't like you to do that very much. Uh, they'd rather keep you suppressed, uh, yeah. keep the virus suppressed, and not let it ever come back and try to get a foothold again. Yeah. So what, what have we learned here in this? Uh, I mean, we have a lot to learn about how this is actually going to work. And as we discussed a little while ago, whether they can do this um, on a synthetic basis right. instead of having to go get donors and change your blood marrow. That sounds like a real project. Um, but what have we learned about uh, the quality of medical science uh, in the 21st century and its relationship with uh, molecular biology? Well, we've, we've learned, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, AIDS was not recognized until 1981, I think, the first formal sort of recognition there were some patients dying of some strange immune system failure. Yeah. And uh, here we are, relatively few years later. I mean, this is 40 years later, and... Oh, it seemed insoluble for the oh, longest oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was horrible. There were, there were predictions that it was going to wipe out the population of the world or, you know, de decimate the population, kill off half the, the people on Earth. Uh, and with a great deal of time and a great deal of effort and a great deal of money and a huge dedication by just a whole lot of people, they have got now these antiretroviral drugs that basically can hold it at bay. And they now have a process to cure it. Uh, it's, it seems like it's working. And there are, there are other people working on further cures that are not quite probably so severe or so extreme. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's really remarkable amazing. that humanity and the medical science, yeah. um, science in general, can, can deal with this and find a cure in a relatively short time of something that seemed insoluble. Right. This is likable science. It's, yeah. Yes, it's likable, <laughs> at least likable, very right. likable. Yeah. But you know what, what, it, what it shows, I mean, in a sort of in a, in, a, in a larger sense, is that, yes, humanity can find solutions. We can find solutions to things that, um, you know, Vika, for example, 
we can find a solution to that. It's going to take a little while. We're going to have to dig deep. We're going to have to train our researchers. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of them right here in that chair mm -hmm. who are working on this project. Um, train our research to deal with, with things that appear to be insoluble. Um, and, and we can do it. And we're going to, the other point I would make with you is that we're going to need to do it. Absolutely. Because these things can be scourges. No, uh, the problems in the world are not going away. There are yeah. new problems every day, and yes, we need science. It's not a silver bullet, but it's, it's a hugely important and vital tool to solving a lot of the world's problems. Right. So we have to, if we want to survive as a species, we're going to have to deal with the possibility of, um, you know, pandemic infections and diseases. Right. I'm reminded of uh, MRSA. I'm mm -hmm. reminded of disease, uh, rather. Um, antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria, right. and most recently also in the New York Times, funguses right. that are popping up all over the yeah. world yeah. now, right. uh, and there's no known drug to deal with it. Right. And there was an article recently about some woman in Chicago, she died a horrible death mm -hmm. of fungus, what a way to go. Right. Um, and so, you know, the point is that we really have to address this. We have to fund re medical research in this country for the benefit of, of humankind. Absolutely. I mean, we have to educate our, our populace. We should be encouraging all students to at least look at the world of science and STEM and, and those who like it and feel so, so impelled, encourage them, support them, give them every chance to learn because you know, we, we need an army of good, of good doctors out there to take care of the, the problems yeah. that will beset us. And there'll, and there'll be more. Oh, absolutely. There'll be more because they mutate. Yep. The, the Zika virus, right. uh, all those uh, mosquito borne. Other mosquito-borne viruses that are coming around, they mutate. Uh, and what I read recently is they even mutate in a given host while, while you are taking a given drug to deal with a given virus, the virus is mutating under you. The same with bacteria, the uh, same with fungus. I mean, these things are so threatening to humanity in general. We cannot afford, that's why the whole thing about vaccination is so ridiculous. You, you take the drug, you yeah. save lives, yeah. and you save lives of unknown, un, right. unnumbered, numerous people right. that have nothing to do with it. Right. And uh, we, we are, yeah. uh, that's a whole other that issue. Much, right? We have to have another show on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always elucidating. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. I, you know, you make me feel better all the time. You make me feel that science is likable, and we, we better like it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Jay. Aloha, Ethan. Yes, indeed. <laughs>